Hey there, Alan here, Belfast and Dublin Sports Plus. Welcome to Sports Plus Online. Hello from Scotland. Hi, it's Mike here from Monkton Sports Plus and welcome to Sports Plus Online. Welcome to Sports Plus Online. Don't be late, we're starting soon. It's nearly time for Sports Plus Live, so pop the kettle on, get yourself a hot chocolate, and we'll see you soon. Hello, Hurston here, Perth Sports Plus. Welcome to Sports Plus Online. Well, we've got a quiz coming up later. You'll need not one, but two devices ready to go. It's almost time, guys. Last time to get the kettle on, get yourself a drink, and get ready for the live show. Welcome to Sport Plus Online. Thrilled that you've been able to join us. Trust you have a really good time. Welcome to Sports Plus Online. Don't be late, we're starting soon. In sport, preparation is key. And to be prepared for Sports Plus Online live tonight, you're gonna to need your notebook, a pen, and a Bible. Be prepared, it's coming now.
ready for Sports Plus Online? Have you got your water bottle? And have you got your pen? Let's go! Welcome to Sports Plus Online 2020. All carrot, no stick. Put the kettle on. We'll see you soon. It's nearly time for Sports Plus Live. So pop the kettle on, get yourself a hot chocolate, and we'll see you soon. Hi from Dublin. Ready to go? Got your water bottle? Got your pen? Let's go. Hello, Kirsten here from Sports Plus Perth. Welcome to Sports Plus Online. Woo! We're nearly ready to kick off Sports Plus Online live tonight. And tonight we're doing the big Sports Plus quiz. So you'll need two devices, one to watch the live show and one for your answer sheet. So grab your two devices now, we're kicking off soon. Phil Jack here, Moncton Sports Plus, checking in and hoping you have a great three days ahead. Welcome to Sports Plus Online. Don't be late, we're starting soon. It's nearly time for Sports Plus Live, so pop the kettle on, get yourself a hot chocolate, and we'll see you soon. Hello, Kirsten here, Perth Sports Plus. Welcome to Sports Plus Online. In sport, preparation is key, and to be prepared for Sports Plus Online Live tonight, you're going to need your notebook, a pen, and a Bible. Be prepared. It's coming now. Hey, it's time. Sports Plus Online. Time to tee off. Let's go. Hi everyone, it's Phil here from Belfast Sports Plus and I want to welcome you to Sports Plus Online 2020. Well, hello and welcome to Sports Plus 
online our evening live show. It is great to have you with us. My name is Dave. I've been involved in Brecon and Perth Sports Bus for many years. And I'm hosting this evening with Katie. Katie, hi. How are you? Oh, hey, Dave. Great. So nice to see you. Um, yeah, I'm Katie. I've been involved in Perth Sports Plus for a good number of years now. Absolutely gutted not to be there in the summer, but so excited for this. It's just a bit different, isn't it, Dave? It is. Let's be honest. It feels very strange being in a living room full of sports kit, but not actually out at Sports Plus. <laughs> playing we, hey, look we would have had a few camps completed by now we'd probably be in the middle of a couple of them and a few more to look forward to but we're not but some things remain the same katie don't panic see what sports plus all about is serious sports action for the serious sports person and as you saw from the morning workout that still exists with sports plus online um, but it's also giving people a chance to think about how their passion for sport can connect with a faith in Jesus. And we hope this evening and across the three days that will happen throughout all the different activities. So we're in for a good night. 45 minutes, action packed. We're going to be seeing some of your daily challenge highlights and we're going to be doing a Sports Plus quiz all together. And we're going to be hearing some interviews with elite sports people talking about their faith and their sport. We're going to hear from some of you guys, young people, answering a question that we've got. And we will be getting the Bible open, having a look at what God has to say to us and Langs will help us understand it. So we are in for some night together here at Sports Plus Online. I think before we get going, Katie, we should say a prayer. Can you pray for us? I'd love to. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for the chance we have to meet together, although not in person, but online. We thank you, Father, for this morning already, the workouts, um, the time that we spent listening to Mike. We thank you for that. And we just um, ask, Father, that you'd be with us for this evening. Help us um, to hear what Lanx is going to say to us later on and that we may be open to what um, he, uh, what you're saying through him. Just pray that you'd be with us. We pray that we'd have a great evening together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Katie, I mentioned the morning workout. Yeah. Tell me honestly now, how did you find it? Well, I mean, first of all, all Becky and Struan, what a pair. They're just <laughs> brilliant. I absolutely loved it. Um, not going to lie, kind of thought first day, they'll ease us in. They'll just, you know, they'll take it a bit easy on us. Straight in ankle taps. Um, <laughs> get straight in, a little bit of the sweat on, getting going, but, you know, Perfect way to start a day, definitely. Um, and what about the challenge? Now, the Keep You Uppies challenge. Dave, how how'd you get on? Did you manage well, it? Yeah, well, I was uh, making a cup of tea, picked up my tea bag, thought, why not? Let's have a go. Failed, of course, and miserably. I think I managed two. Um, so it was a bit of a flop, unfortunately. But wow. I, I liked it. It was a good daily challenge. Yeah, great challenge. I'm not sure you'll have made the highlight reel. Um, um, but why don't we have a look and see who has?
<laughs> that was brilliant. Some serious talent on show there. That is quite an eclectic version of um, of Keepy Uppies. That was brilliant. Cannot wait for tomorrow for to see the next challenge. Um, but Dave, what are we going to be looking at tonight? Yes, that was some effort. My favourite, I think, was the water bottle, to be fair. That was, and his celebration afterwards. Yeah, wow. yeah, great enthusiasm, definitely. Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to be looking at the Bible together. And uh, we are going to be looking at a little portion of Jesus's words that are recorded by Matthew in his account of Jesus's life. And we think these words are really important and totally worth listening to. And we've called it the ultimate team talk. This video will help us think about that a little bit more. Voices. What they say matters. They can keep people apart. The time has now come for us all to do more. You must stay at home. Sports Plus 2020 has been cancelled. They can bring people back together. From this weekend onwards, millions of people will be able to rejoin their local sports teams as soon as their organisations publish approved guidance. They can change things. I'm just hoping that the government make a make a U-turn on on the decision to to stop the free free meal vouchers. You know, crazy to think that we managed to manage to do it, but you know, I'm just I'm just thankful for all the people that um, helped to raise awareness. They can build us up. Or tear us down. I would give 100 percent today. You gave me nothing. They can bring excitement or commiseration. They can teach us, inspire us, encourage us, shape us. Voices are everywhere. There's so many words. There's so many voices. Whose voice do you listen to? Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man. His kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For where your treasure is, this voice encourages, challenges, answers our biggest questions. It is a voice to build our lives on. This is God's voice. This is the ultimate team talk. Brilliant. Well, we'll be thinking about that a little bit more later on. Um, but if you've been to Sports Plus before, you know that every year we have a memory verse. Just a, We just love to get some truth from the Bible ringing around our ears. But of course, we like to do it with a little twist, a little bit of flair, I like to think. And um, we like to put it to a tune we all know. And of course, throw in the all important shapes as well. Um, our memory verse for these three days is going to be from Matthew 6, verse 19 to 20. And it's part of the ultimate team talk that we're going to be thinking about. Um, and we're going to look at those verses more tomorrow night. But sadly... Dave, no sing-along competition. Um, oh, I know it's a great sadness, but <laughs> our leaders from all the different camps have put something together very special for you all. They've been singing their little hearts out, throwing their shapes all around, um, and they put together this video just for you. So have a look at this. Oh, I'm gonna 
Wow. Brilliant. Wow. That is some memory verse. Tell you what, Kate, that's going to change my New Year's forever. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be singing that, belting it out. <sighs> Unbelievable. Well, look, little challenge for everyone. If yeah. you fancy try to memorise that so that you can sing along tomorrow night, it's going to be released on all our different social media platforms. Get listening, get singing, and believe you me, it does stick in your head. It does exactly what we want it to do. Um, that... <laughs> Oh, that was some video. Fair play to them all. Right. Quiz time, KT. Oh, exciting. Nice quiz. We've said in the intro, you need two devices, one that you're watching us on, and you need to grab another one now and go to this website, christiansinsport.org.uk forward slash Tuesday quiz, because we are going to have our first Sports Plus quiz. KT, fancy a sports quiz? Oh, I love a good sports quiz, Dave. Absolutely. What about yourself? I love them. I, I like to think I'm very good at them. <laughs> Are you not? It is so revealing. Like, see, <laughs> quizzes, like a sports round comes up and they all look and think, oh, this is this is Dave's round. And it, oh, it goes wrong every single time. Just and, the pressure gets too much. <laughs> no, I just <laughs> don't know very much about it. I don't, I don't know my sport very well. So there you are. There's the address. Get it up on your device. You just need to enter in the details and uh, we'll be starting shortly. Katie, how's it going to work? Explain how the format runs. Yeah, well, there's 10 questions, Dave, and you'll maybe be slightly relieved to know that there are, it's multiple choice. So there's A, B, C or D. Um, so you've got a 25% chance of getting a question right, which just you know, <laughs> was a wee boost to help us right at the beginning of this. Um, and because, you know, we can't, have a draw at the end there has to be a winner there is also a, a tiebreaker question at the end to make sure that we have a clear um winner um at the end and results we're gonna tell them at the end of the show is that right dave that is right we'll see the results later on and then the answers will be released later on on instagram if you want to check where you were right or wrong i think let's get going katie right. hopefully everyone is ready for the first round for our first question of the sports quiz. Here Great. we go. Which club finished third in the English Premier League this season? Is it A, Manchester City, B, Manchester United, C, Leicester City, or D, Arsenal? Got to be quite quick on these, don't you, Dave? You've only got 30 seconds per question. Yeah, it moves fast. Moves fast. Okay. Football to kick off, not everyone's thing, but hazard a guess, just go for it. 25% chance. Here we go. Question two. Which sport team uses this logo? Which sport team uses this logo? You've got your four choices. A, Chicago Bulls. B, Buffalo Bills. C, Cincinnati Bengals. Or D, the Los Angeles Chargers. Ooh. Tricky. Well, it's not, hopefully people are, are thinking with the logo. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Okay, right. Get question three. Which rugby union team is known as the Springboks? Is it A, Australia, B, Georgia, C, South Africa, or D, New Zealand? Oh, this should be up your street, Dave. Bit of it rugby. Is. I cannot wait for some rugby to get back um, on. Oh, 
there's one thing I miss right now, it's watching live rugby. So soon, soon. Okay, get your answer down. Question four, here it is. How many balls are on a snooker table? Bit of maths, here we go. Is it A, 22? Is it B, 15? Is it C, 21? Or is it D, 30? I can almost feel people desperately trying to pick that snooker table, like trying to count in their heads. It's the red zone, in it, let's be honest. Oh, I know. How many? How many? How many reds are there? Right, here we go. Question five. How many Paralympic gold medals has Ellie Simmons won? Is it A, 10, B, 2, C, 5, or D, none? Tell you what, I am missing the Olympics and the Paralympics. This, this, oh, it would have been, I think it would have been on about now. It's so it sad. Would. Yeah, it would have been right now. But we'll look forward to it for next year. Yes, indeed. Okay, get it down. Question six. What is the weight of an Olympic discus? Goodness me. Right, I'm not going to read them out, Katie. We'll be there <laughs> okay, longer than 22 oh. seconds. I will okay. let you read that and make your choice. Are you an experienced discus player, Dave? <laughs> no chance. I can't <laughs> claim to be at all. <laughs> Athletics wasn't quite my, I quite liked a bit of javelin, but never went near the discus. <laughs> okay, question seven. Which of these is the heaviest? Is it a netball, a rugby ball, an American football, or a cricket ball? Which is heaviest? Well, Give it a wee. What do you think? Mm. Hard to compare when you've only got so one. I left out in the rain as well, so I think it's got a bit of water in there. But, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. It's a tricky one. Tricky. Mm. Okay, question eight. Which team does Lewis Hamilton drive for? Is it A, Ferrari, B, Red Bull, C, Williams, or D, Mercedes? Mm. Like your F1? Do you know, it's not the best thing to listen to on the radio. <laughs> in my experience, I listen to a lot of sport on the radio, but I haven't quite mastered listening to the cars for however long it takes. I do, I, I find it interesting, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question nine. Uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins play which sport? Is it A, baseball, B, American football, C, basketball, or D, ice hockey? That is a brilliant name for a sports team, the Pittsburgh yeah. Penguins. You wouldn't believe it, would you, unless you actually saw them on the results on a table or something? <laughs> You'd have to wait. Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't guess that one, I don't think. <laughs> right, last question. Mm -hmm. Which of these sports made their first appearance in Rio 2016? Was it A, surfing, B, golf, C, baseball, or D, triathlon? Ooh, Rio 2016. Yeah. Now, we said, Katie, we, we're not in for having a draw no, tonight. Absolutely we? not. An out and out winner. So absolutely. straight after this now, you've got 30 seconds to answer our tiebreaker question. This could be the defining thing to get you up that leaderboard. 30 seconds to answer this question. How many goals were scored in the English Premier League this season? Wow, that, what a tiebreaker. <laughs> I mean, wow, where do you even start with that? That's, oh hell, okay. I couldn't even remember how many of them scored in the last week of the five matches. <laughs> oh, well, this will get it in. Yeah. You have to hit, click submit, otherwise, it won't go through. Quick, quick, quick. Done. All oh, right, submit your answers. Right, okay, the whole sheet needs to be in, Taz. Click that submit button. Now, this is young people, trainee leaders, yeah. leaders, coaches, support staff. Everyone's in on this, right, Katie? Yeah, absolutely. It's And it's all just for the glory, isn't it, Dave? <laughs> yeah, no pride, I'm afraid. Just, no uh, pride, just glory. Bit of pride. So Great. get them in. And that is... Oh, that is a, now, as we said, 
We will get the leaderboard up at the end of our evening show here, and you can see if you've made the top 10. What exciting baitings. Now, Dave, we've already said that rugby is your sport. Um, can you tell me who are some of the most influential voices you listen to in your sport? Yeah, rugby is my sport. I've just moved from playing to coaching. Um, and so, yeah, I've definitely had some super coaches over the years that have been really influential, really encouraging to me. I must say as well, my dad, my dad's voice, he's got a pretty loud voice to be honest <laughs> Uh, a Welshman and but his encouragement in my rugby for all these years has, has been something I've really valued yeah how about you Katie yeah well I mean I, I suppose playing badminton the coach would you know you'd be your technique would be looked at you would listen to them because they knew what they were doing they would keep you right they would make sure that your attitude was right and um, all these things so important aren't they just people who know more about the sport or whatever it is you're doing, just so important to listen to these voices. Yeah. Um, and I think we're, um, you know, we're thinking about that this evening, aren't we? We've been introduced already to our theme for these three days, the ultimate team talk. Um, but each evening, we're also going to be having, I think, about um, sort of focusing in um, on a particular area. And tonight's is truth in a noisy world of sport. Mm. Now, before um, we hear from Matthew's account of Jesus' life, before we hear the Bible reading, and before Lanx then comes and unpacks that um, a bit more for us, um, we have been put together a wee video of some of you people, some of you young people, um, hearing about what your answer is to the question of who you listen to most in sport. So have a look at this. Who do I listen to most in my sport? Uh, probably my coach in my sport, Canoe Slalom. We spend a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with our coach during the sessions. Uh, so yeah, and he seems to know what he's talking about. So, In my sport, the person who I listen to most is probably my mum, because she's always come to all of my matches and supported me throughout uh, the whole time I've been playing, and I really value her opinion. In my sport, I listen most to my coach because he has the game plan. Um, he thinks very carefully how we can play our best to win the match and if everyone's not following the game plan, then we won't be as successful. In my sport, I listen most, most to my coach, Don, who is an amazing coach and knows everything there probably is to know about triathlon. And he's a great fan. In my sport, I listen most to the older players I play with because most of them are better than me and I value their input. In my sport, I probably listen to my coaches the most because they're experienced and they're always there to help. Uh, so the people I listen to most in my sport, um, other than like my coaches, probably my teammates because obviously you're in like a similar position to them, uh, doing the same sport and you can just le yeah, learn a lot from them. In my sport, I listen most to my, my coaches, specifically my goalkeeper coaches because they know what they're talking about and they know what I need to do to improve as a player. In my sport, I listen most to my coach because I respect him and he constantly encourages me. The person I listen to most in my sport is my coach Trevor. Why? Because he's very experienced, he knows what's best for me and I get on really well with him. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet, it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine, and does not put them into practice, is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash.
We will get Lanx to join us shortly. His mic has just uh, dropped off. So, Lanx, are you there? There we go. Thanks, Hampo. All good to roll. Listen, what I was saying, believe it or not, welcome tonight. Lovely to see you. Look, we're all sports people. So here's the deal. Whether you play an individual sport or a team sport, do you know what a coach's last words before you go out to compete are inspiring or can be? And they can be really helpful. I remember one manager in particular, all the team talk going on. And then at the end, we'd run out of the changing room door without fail. He'd grab my arm. He'd look me in the eyes and he'd say, Blanky, go and enjoy it, son. And do you know what it did? It gave me real belief. It gave me freedom to go and play. Over the next three nights, we're going to be looking at the ultimate team talk. From Jesus, who is the ultimate coach. And tonight, we're trying to answer that question. Whose voice are you listening to? Where is truth in a noisy world of sport? You see, we decide whose voice we listen to based upon the, the source of the voice, based upon the person who's speaking, don't we? Do I trust them? That's why in the Vox Box, did you hear those young people? I heard they say, the voice that I most listen to, well, well, it's a coach. He's going to help me. Of course he is. It's a parent who I trust. It's a, it's a friend. You know, Serena Williams, fabulous tennis player. Do you know, she says her most influential voice she says this, my father has been the most important person in my career. He still tells me the stuff I'm doing wrong. You see what she's saying? He speaks truth into my life. I trust my father. So what about these words of Jesus? It comes right at the end of a long talk called the Sermon on the Mount. Here's a summary of the whole talk. Jesus says this, here's a summary. He says, a life that trusts in me looks very different from the world around. And Jesus finishes his talk with a really simple picture of two different kinds of people. And it's a summary of two different kinds of people today. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, says Jesus, puts them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Here's the first kind of person. It's the wise man. Why don't we call him the cool? Do you know when I was a, a lad, that used to be kind of the in word, the cool. It just meant you were smart. It meant you were top lad. Here's the first person, the cool. And Jesus is saying, the one who listens to my words and trusts in them is like a wise man who built his house on rock. I'm no builder. Trust me on that. But... I get this. If foundations are built on something immovable that cannot change like a rock, that is a wise, wise builder. See what happened to this house. The rain came down, verse 25. The streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. You see what happens? See what happens? The storm comes batters the house, yet it does not fall. Why? Because of the firm foundations. They're on the rock. Outrageous words of Jesus. He's saying, here's the cool. Here's the wise man. It's the person that listens to my words in a noisy, noisy world. Not just listens to them, but acts upon them, trusts in them, builds their life upon them. And you might be sitting at home in your cosy armchair thinking, why on earth would I do that? Well, we've already said, haven't we? We decide whether the voice is worth listening to based upon the source of the voice. Do you trust them? In other words, do the actions match their words? Does my coach really want the best for me? Well, he'll prove it by his actions. Does my mother really care for me? She'll prove it by her actions. Well, look at Jesus. He asks us to trust in his words, in his voice, in him. And he teaches about what he came to do. And then he acted out his words. He actually proved his words by his actions. Look at this little verse that Jesus says a little bit later on in the gospel. 
He says, God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Look at Jesus. He lived and then he died on a cross for a purpose. Big question, is Jesus trustworthy? Yes. His actions match his words. Yes, he died so that you may live. His death brings me life. See the cool? The cool are the smart ones. Like a wise man, life is secure and steadfast. Come on, let's ground this into a bit of reality, sport in life. Let's sit down with Smalls and hear what Matthew's got to say to us. Great. Well, very excited to have Matthew Joseph on with us today. Matthew, very welcome. Good to see you. For those of you who don't know, Matthew is a, an elite footballer who has, four, who has had 400 appearances for a number of different professional clubs in England. And uh, Matthew, you are now uh, a development officer for coaches and again in the youth elite football uh, world here in England. So great to have you on. We're just going to be asking you a couple of questions to get some thoughts on what we've just been looking at. Well, let's just dive straight in, Matthew. Here is the first question uh, for you. So we've been looking at, and what we're looking at this evening, as we've been saying, is looking at these great voices, or the big voices that we hear in sport. For you, Matthew, throughout your football career, and as now I suppose a spit, particularly in, the, in your coaching role, what are those big voices that you can so easily listen to, or the big voices that players and coaches alike are hearing in your world of sport at the moment? It's a great question. Um, I think for the young people, I think for the coaches, it, there's so much noise going on from the people who, who want you to do well and those who um, w- want to lift you up. So I think just generally there's, there's coaches, there's managers, there's parents, there's your peers, there's, there's fans, there's people who, who are watching. There's, it's really difficult to, um, to, to hear everyone as there's lots and lots of voices going on. Very difficult yeah. time. Yeah, and... Uh... What, what would you say, what are some of the, what are those voices saying, Matthew? What's the message of those voices, do you think, at the moment that people in the world of sport can hear? I think there's that stuff around um, people wanting them to do well, so around performance, sometimes around identity, sometimes about how hard they work, about their mindset, the things that they should do, the things that they shouldn't do, the things that they should, um, should sacrifice, the things that they um, are required to do in order to, to achieve the things that they want to achieve. And it's, it's, it's constant and it comes from all angles and from everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose then what we've, what we've been looking at is the voice then of Jesus in the midst of that. And uh, as Lanks has said, obviously, and, and at Christians in Sport, we fully believe that Jesus speaks into our world of sport. Tell us for you, how does the voice of Jesus, and putting it into practice, we have saw it's like a wise man building his house on the rock, when for you, what did it look like for you? And when did you do that to actually listen to the voice of Jesus in the midst of all these voices and put it into practice? I think for me, I, I had a long period where I hadn't um, put, put, put Jesus first. And I do now and have done for years. And it's just because he loves us unconditionally. So whether I win, whether I lose, whether I pay badly, um, whatever the result or the score, but whatever my performance is. And I think for the young people and the coaches that I work with, it's the same for them that if they put Jesus first he's yes he wants us to do well and he's given us a god-given talent and skills for us to uh to, you know to play whatever sport we want to play but he loves us that he loves us unconditionally and so that that for me is the, is a beautiful blessing that whatever I do I'm loved by somebody um and I'm loved whether I perform well or whether I don't perform well and actually that gives me the gives me and gives those young people that I work with and the coaches that I work with give them the encouragement to to, to carry on yeah and that's that is the truth that is I suppose the real heart of how Jesus transforms how we play our sport 30 seconds then Matthew to finish this off what would be the advice that you have taken on yourself and that you give to the young people listening of how we can listen to the voice of Jesus that voice that you've just explained in the midst of all the other voices that shout so loudly in the world of sport for me it's very simple um, and I understand it's not as easy for everyone else, but it's putting my faith first. So everywhere around me, whether it's on the boards written behind me or written down on my computer, it's faith, family and football. And I am, I am obsessive about football. So you can imagine how obsessive I am then about my faith and my family. 
every day is football. I love it. Um, and I love my sport, and as I'm sure all the young people do who are Christians in sport. But that just shows you how much that my faith and my belief in my faith comes above everything else. Super. Matthew, thanks very much. We're going to finish off each of these interviews with how we finish our memory verse. So on the count of three, let's give a little boom. One, two, three. Boom. Ah, uh, Matthew, hey, didn't it make sense? I trust in Jesus because he, he loves me. I get him. Well, back to the story of the two people. Do you remember represented by the two houses, two different foundations? Listen and act on Jesus' words by trusting him. That's the call. But what about the fool? Well, let's go. Verse 26. But everyone who hears these words of mine does not put them into practice. Is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Hear my words, but don't act upon them. You're like a fool, says Jesus. You are a fool. That's really harsh, isn't it? And you might be thinking, well, it's hard to hear the voice of Jesus in a very noisy world, in a very noisy world of sport. There's so many voices that are influencing us. You heard that from Matthew. Let me talk about a few now, perhaps. These will ring uh, clear. What about this one? Be up to date. Wear the right gear, play the right games, listen to the right music to fit in. Be clever, work hard, get the results. Be healthy, eat this, drink that, rest, exercise. Be different, don't fit the norm. Dare to be different, let it go. Be liked, have as many friends as possible. Be rich, go get the world. Be Gaza. <laughs> listen. Gaza was my favourite football. He still is. Brilliant, brilliant player. And when I was a lad, I was just thinking I just wanted to be like him. Sporting achievement was everything. See, these things might not be wrong in and of themselves. But Jesus is saying if you put them foundational, if you live for them, if they consume your thoughts, if you're broken when you don't have it, it is like a man who builds his house on sand. A life that will easily collapse. Look, I've heard it say that the test of a good building, it's not on its outside beauty, outward appearance, but on the strength of its foundation. Pointless if a life looks great, but is built on nothing but sand. And look at the consequences. See there, verse 27. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Cleverness, being up to date, being like sporting achievement. You see, if they're my foundation, my life will come crashing down. Jesus is talking about the, the final crash. It's right at the end of his talk. Uh, these words are meant to be a real challenge to his listeners to make us think, and us ourselves, make us think what is foundational in our lives. Even if you think that the final crash, death itself, is so far off, do you know what? We cannot be sure. We cannot. It's impossible to exaggerate the importance of the choice of the cool and the fool. So if you listen to the voice of Jesus, trust him. He has shown that he brings life by his actions. Do you know he didn't come to add value to life? He didn't come to make you feel better about yourself. He didn't come even to make you a better person. He came to save. He died in your place to save you, to take the punishment that we deserve. He died to transform you, to bring you real life so that you can really live and go and play sport for how it's meant to be played. Why? Because he loves you. But you see, if you listen to these words of Jesus and ignore them, if you make other voices a foundation to build life upon, it leads to destruction. It's so clear. Look, we've got time over the next few days to consider the ultimate team talk from Jesus. I think there are three things uh, that will help us think about this. Help us to act rightly. Listen and put your trust in Jesus. Do that this week. 
or remember and come back to Jesus. Remember Jesus' voice, come back to him or continue listening to and living for Jesus in your world of sport. It's the ultimate team talk because it's about the ultimate foundation for life. The voice of Jesus that points to his death where he died for you. What a foundation. Whose voice are you listening to? We're going to take some moments just to reflect on that question. Well, that's the question for this evening. Whose voice are you listening to? We think that is such an important question and we really believe that Jesus' words are important and worth listening to and acting upon. So continue to think about that for yourself and reflect on that as the next 24 hours unfold. Katie, we're nearly done. We yep. did say earlier on that we've got to get our quiz leaderboard and show where people are at. Right. Here it is. Ooh. Absolutely. Okay, so you're going to see the whole top 10, but the the main place is three to one. So let's go. Let's yeah. see who is in. Oh, Rory from Belfast. Well done. Good on oh, you, Rory. Bronze medal glory for you. Oh, Belfast, strong showing. Sarah from Belfast second. But who's taking it for today? Oh, Dan. Dan. Oh, Nottingham. Oh, Good job. Good job. Um, well, don't forget that um, later on this evening on Instagram, the answer to that quiz will be up. You can see where, what went so right and just where it all went so wrong um, as well. Um, so you can have a look on there. But Dave, listen, what else do we have to look forward to this week? Yes. Well, keep an eye on the social media stuff. We talked about the memory verse. Why don't you get listening to that? But um, as you can see there, if you've registered in advance for our team discussions, they're happening at nine o'clock. So please make sure you're ready to go with that. Tomorrow morning, we're back with our morning workout. Nine o'clock, get your sports kit on, get ready for a sweat on. It's set to be a good one. And then again, we're back here, eight o'clock tomorrow night for our live show. We'd love you to be involved in as much as you can. But that's us. Let me say a prayer to close us off and say good night. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for a great evening together. Thanks for answering our prayer at the beginning. Thanks for the encouragements and challenges we've heard through interviews, but particularly through your word, the Bible explained to us in Matthew's gospel. Help us to think about it, reflect on it and apply it to our lives, we pray, and be with us in the remaining few days ahead of Sports Plus Online. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Great to see you. See you tomorrow morning.